Hi everyone, this is Colleen Fitzwater from the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance. Today I'm with Dr. Renat Jesselson, who is both a new member and the new chair of the Scientific Advisory Board. Dr. Jesselson is an assistant professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, associate physician of medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and a medical oncologist at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Dr. Jesselson, welcome, and we're so glad to have you as chair of our Scientific Advisory Board. Thank you, and thank you for having me here today. So the first question I have for you is, can you tell our audience about your background and how you became interested in lobular breast cancer? So I'm a breast oncologist, and I'm also a physician scientist involved in both basic science research and translational research, as well as clinical studies. Um, my research focus is on hormone receptor positive breast cancer, and lobular breast cancers are mostly hormone receptor positive breast cancer. I've been really inspired by my patients with invasive lobular breast cancers, especially treating um, these patients in the clinic and understanding what are their particular needs that are really unmet and require additional both preclinical and clinical investigation. So you're the new chair of LBCA Scientific Advisory Board. What drew you to the Scientific Advisory Board? So obviously the topic of the Scientific Advisory Board of Lobular Breast Cancers, which I uh, hold dear to, um, and also uh, being able to work with the other uh, investigators that uh, make up the Scientific Advisory Board who really have made uh, seminal contributions in this field. And it really is a, a great honor and, and pleasure uh, to work with this group of people. Are there specific things that you believe can be accomplished when all of these ILC researchers collaborate? Absolutely. So one of the challenges in ILC is, although it is about 20% of all breast cancers still, the numbers are not very high and having a larger group of people working together who have different resources that we can put together as well as access to uh, a large number of patients with invasive lobular breast cancer can really enhance uh, reach research and enable us to move the field forward. Great, so as the chair, what are you most looking forward to in this role? Um, so I'm first looking forward to interacting with all the other members of the SAB as well as all the other members um, of LBCA. Um, I look forward to trying to develop uh, clinical trials um, dedicated to patients with lobular breast cancers to identify treatments that are tailored to lobular breast cancer patients. So we know that you have a clinical practice. So, and I know you mentioned the proportion of um, women in general who have breast cancer who have ILC. So what proportion of the patients that you see with breast cancer happen to have ILC? I think I probably see more um, patients with ILC in my practice. Probably about 30, 35% of patients have ILC. And so when you see those patients, what do you see as the biggest challenges for those diagnosed with lobular breast cancer? So um, it depends on the stage of disease. I think one of the challenges in early stage of lobular breast cancer is that many of these patients present already with multiple positive lymph nodes or what we call locally advanced disease. Um, and because of the tumor burden, most of the, or many of these patients do receive chemotherapy treatment, although there have been now a number of studies showing that in lobular breast cancers, um, there's likely no or very limited benefit from chemotherapy. Um, so I think we really need to identify treatments that are, are tailored for our patients and possibly not including uh, chemotherapy. Um, in the metastatic setting, some of the, the challenges are um, the ability to participate in clinical trials because of the sites of their disease that are not always uh, well seen in standard CT scans. And also uh, some of the clinical challenges are treating patients with um, disease that has sp spread to the peritoneum, both because it is hard to detect 
um, this disease by imaging and also because some of the symptoms can be very difficult to manage, such as um, bowel obstructions, uh, that can be a very um, difficult symptom. You have the clinical work, you see your patients, and then you also perform breast cancer research, including ILC-focused research. In your opinion, why is ILC-specific research needed and, and so important? So we now know um, that ILC has a unique biology. Um, a number of studies have now shown that the genetics of ILC are different. Um, we have done work in, our, um, in my lab that also show that their epigenetics are also different. And we know from their clinical presentation um, that ILC are different. Um, and that is why we do need research specific to ILC um, both preclinical research as well as clinical um, investigation. And can you elaborate um, for the layperson listening to this, what does epigenetics mean? So epigenetics uh, are anything that are not changes in uh, the DNA itself. Um, so and there are other, there are other um, biological processes that regulate um, the expression of different genes that are not necessarily due to, um, that are not related to the DNA itself. So there are, for instance, many transcription factors that are proteins that regulate the expression of genes. Um, the, also the structure of the chromatin, which are basically the structures where the DNA is wrapped around, um, can also be different. Um, and that is also, an, uh, those are also epigenetic um, processes. LBA's executive director, Laurie, interviewed you to, in a webinar for the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation Patient Advocacy Program as part of, of SABCS 20. At that time, you discussed some proteins with promise for future targeted therapy for ILC. Can you update us on where that research has led? Sure. So um, in the research that we've been doing over the past few years, we identified a number of uh, proteins that are really critical for uh, driving progression in invasive lobular breast cancer. Um, and these are related, this is research related to epigenetics. Um, one of the proteins that we found is a key transcription factor in hormone receptor positive breast cancers that really regulates the estrogen receptor. Um, and we found that this key protein called FOXA1 um, changes the estrogen receptor network in lobular breast cancer. Um, and through this work, we identified a gene signature um, that is associated with worse outcomes, specifically in low-risk invasive lobular breast cancers. Um, so we are currently continuing this work and looking into data sets of lob additional data sets of lobular breast cancer to further confirm this gene set that could be used as a biomarker to identify uh, patients with relatively clinically low risk invasive lobular breast cancers, but have, but do have a genetic or molecular higher risk. Um, and we are, we've also looked into a number of ways to target FOXA1. And in our study, we've done this through um, CRISPR you know, gene editing. Um, and um, we hope that we can translate some of this work into the clinic, looking at other ways to target FOXA1. Um, we've also identified other um, potential targets that we that do that could be targeted by currently available um, uh, drugs, and we hope to further investigate these in first and preclinical studies. Can you tell me about any other current research that you're doing? Sure. So I'm um, currently um, uh, working together with my colleague Otto Metzger, who was the former chair of SAB. Um, uh, he has opened a, he has uh, had a opened a clinical trial um, in the neoadjuvant setting. So this is prior to surgery um, for patients with early stage hormone receptor positive. And this study was unique because it was it included a pre-specified subgroup of patients and a relatively large number of patients who have ILC. I'm currently together with Otto working on the 
correlative studies for this trial, um, which includes um, comprehensive uh, molecular analyses uh, of the clinical samples of before treatment and after endocrine treatment or endocrine treatment and ACDK4-6 inhibitor um, in patients with lobular breast cancer. From your perspective, why is it so important to include patient advocates in developing and in implementing ILC research? So uh, obviously ILC research is really all dedicated to patients and for improving outcomes in patients. And that is why I think in ILC research and all the other research we do, having advocates, advocates um, is critical as we really need to hear the voice of patients and to understand what their needs are um, and also have, have advocates get more other and other patients involved in this research in order to move the research forward. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Jesselson, that's all the questions I have for now. It was so great spending time with you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you very much.